with me is Joe. Hi. And Eric. Wow. The time is after dark, the place is on the stick, and tonight we're going to be streaming the brand new Hot Off the Presses Shuffle Knight expansion campaign, whatever you want to call it. Uh, not Plague of Shadows, as the, uh, the menu would have you believe, but Spectre of Torment. So let's get a new game file going on here. Plague of Shadows was the one from a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, it has been a little while since Plague of Shadows. Has it, has it been? A, it hasn't been a couple of years though, has maybe, it? Maybe it's two really years. Long? Well, was or a year and a half you, at least. You put it on your best of list for 2015, right, Mike? Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, I want to say not uh, even I, early 2015. Like I want to say like maybe two years ago, two yeah. full years ago. That was really good. I loved. Uh, Good old Plague Knight over here. I thought his campaign was super creative and interesting. Uh, but that campaign was more or less the same game with a new protagonist. And from what I understand, Spectre of Torment is all new levels uh, as well as new character and moveset. So, might explain why it's taken them so long to do it. Yeah, so what is, this, so is this included with like just Shovel Knight or is this additional? So, it was included with this? Shovel Knight until like today. Basically, anyone okay. who buys Shovel Knight, I think starting now, you only get the Shovel Knight campaign and you have to buy the rest separately. Um, mm. Whereas everyone who ordered, who already had the game on, I think, pretty much any system previously gets the basic campaign, Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight. Because those are all the ones wow. that were uh, from the Kickstarter. From the Kickstarter, right. yeah. Uh, so they said they'd do three extra campaigns. No one was expecting them to be nearly as, as crazy and detailed as they are. Um, I don't know, I know just you, the original it, the original game was like more than worth twenty dollars. I think I got it for ten. Was it was that what the Kickstarter was? I think it was twenty bucks when I like I'm missing one letter to name my character Dude Hammer, so it's gonna be <laughs> Dude Ham R. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, the game was amazing and it was a super great deal, and now they're getting to the point where I think they can justify mm -hmm. say, look, we're not gonna give you, you know, four different platformers for twenty bucks at this point. Um, yeah. So I actually bought an extra copy of this on Vita a couple weeks ago when it was on sale because I thought it would be cool to have this portably. And because I bought that when I did, it's going to get the the four the four original campaigns, and then who knows what they'll do after that. All right, let's get the show on the road. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what Yacht Club comes up with after. Um... If, are they, I guess, are they just done with Shovel Knight now? They're, they've made good on all the uh, Kickstarter stuff, and they can. No, they still no, have to do a campaign have... for King Knight. Yeah. Oh, they still have, they have one more to do. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh yeah, and it's it's gonna be a while. But after that, I think it would be kind of cool uh, to see them do something else. They're so talented. I mean, I kind of hope they stick in the two D pixel art style, but I'd be kind of down for whatever they're gonna make next. Yeah. Spectre Knight, servant to the Enchantress, has been given a harrowing task. Yacht Club, Club game makes a spiritual metal storm successor. Okay, yes. Sound? I'm into that. Yeah. yeah. I must form an invincible order. With each member gathered, a treasured keepsake grows in power. That's the, uh, <laughs> I believe that's the phase locket that you get when you're playing a Shovel Knight, and when you meet Spectre Knight, if you use it, he gets mad at you artifact that can restore his humanity but only when his task is complete I'm guessing this is not going to work out for him because this is a prequel campaign and you're still a ghost in the main game when Shovel Knight comes and kicks your ass yes what the hell is that thing sorry I'm playing Zelda while Mike is playing this and there's like a really long like sort of Chinese dragon looking thing just sort of like hanging out. Is this the first time you've seen one of those? That's this is the first time I've seen one of oh, those. Oh man. Check what out do I the do? sweet castle Joe. You should you should get a look at this very you could, guy. you could try and hit some arrows with it. Or hit yeah, it with some arrows. It. It's like pretty far away. I, it's out of range for arrows unless I run to catch up with it. So I kinda have no idea uh, how this guy controls. Before Plague Knight came out, there was like a, a tutorial that they posted basically because he was so complicated, showing you how the different stuff worked. Mm -hmm. What I have figured out is that I can wall climb, but not. Okay, only dirt walls, I guess. Yeah. I'm gonna climb up that other wall. Okay, you can. Yeah, you can wall run on dirt walls. You cannot wall run on green walls. Okay, got it. 
I have a remix of the music. Right, so I'm trying to I'm trying to get to a save point in Persona 5. Yeah, so you've been playing that for so a couple I can days. Stop playing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I just got it yesterday, but I think I've got about six hours into it so far. I've finished like the first week, and some some shit has been happening. All right. Um, this game gets like real dark a lot faster than the previous games did. Oh yeah. Yeah, like there, um, uh, there's already like some real bad shit going down with one of the teachers and some of the students in the, the volleyball team that's uh, well, that quite sounds, a bit. It scheming. is like, it is like, it's like some late game, like Persona 3 or 4 kind of stuff, and it happens in the first. Like, I don't think I've been here a week yet. I think I'm on like day 6 or 7. And they're just so. like, what if teachers and students had sex? Um, it's more like abusive, like, coaching habits. Oh. Yeah. Um, and also, like, him trying to use his position to... I guess, yeah, I guess he is trying to coerce one of the students into, like, hooking up with him. All right, so I'm getting the idea of what I can do here. Look at the check. I can wall run up here, jump off, yeah, and that, slash the lamp, and that kind of gives me a boost across like the... A, yeah, that was pretty cool. <clears throat> I still never played the previous expansion for this. It's so good, man. you got to play Plague Knight. It's, I, there's no other platformer out there like it. Uh, well, I my just... biggest problem with this so far is just it's super like it's the same as the previous two personas and that it is super chatty in the first like I still haven't gotten to a point where I can go and explore or do things that aren't just be pushed along by the story and I'm you know, been playing for six hours yeah It'll I mean be nice Persona... when it opens up a little Persona 3 already took a while to get going, then Persona 4 was like four hours before you could really kind of take control of your of your group and do anything, which is yeah. just ridiculous. I don't know. I'm fine with it. Like, I've... Some of the, the writing doesn't seem quite as strong. Like, the, the story is very good, but some of the moment-to-moment -moment translation stuff is kind of not as good in this. Um, and the way that the voice actors read some of the names is really weird. Okay. Just like, I don't even know how to just, well, like, there's a character whose name is A-N-N, -N, but they pronounce it On. <laughs> okay. Which I mean, is weird, I mean, I'm, so maybe there's they're Swedish English voice acting, but that doesn't seem like a Japanese pronunciation of that name either. Um, and also the some of the Andrew, pronunciation, yeah, some of the, like, pronunciation of the Japanese names also seems really weird. What? Um, I mean, bubble's pretty me. So... What did I do to you, Bubble? This game has the least annoying mascot character of the series. I, I mean, there isn't really a mascot happens. character in 3, is there? 3 has a dog, but it's literally just a dog. Yeah. Koromaru is totally sweet, because yeah. he's just a dog. He's just a dog. Um, but you can slash it down. I guess it's like it would be like Teddy and the, the robot lady from... Oh yes, you're right. The, I guess is fucking awful. You're right. I can't. Yeah. I can't deny that. Joe, did you see the sweet skeleton meat that I just ate? Uh, I did not. Well, maybe I haven't yet. But I'm also playing Zelda. As I said, so. Stop playing Zelda and watch the skeleton eat skeleton meat. That's weird. There can't be skeleton meat. They're skeletons. <laughs> There's a little bit of marrow left inside those bones. <laughs> Just gotta boil them and make soup. I don't want that coin that badly. Uh, secrets up there. All right, yeah, I can save. Yeah, if I wasn't already committed to like a hundred more hours of RPGs, I would definitely be interested in getting on Persona. But you all know how yeah. sad my PS3 is, so I won't go over that again. But yeah, mine doesn't. Mine does not accept discs properly. Oh. Did you buy so... the download version? No, I bought a disc version, but uh, well, what I have to do is uh, eject the disc that's in the system, which was Demon Souls, and then uh, turn the PlayStation 3 off, push the disc as far in as I could, 
<laughs> so there's only about a like a quarter of the disc sticking out, it's like and then turn started. the PlayStation. Yeah, and then turn. Yeah, it kind of is like it's like putting a motorcycle in gear and then pushing it down a hill or something. <laughs> so then, yeah, you turn the PlayStation Three. You can on bump then, start your PlayStation Three. Yeah, and, and then it will, uh, and then it will uh, hold the disc the rest of the way in and uh, work properly. But if you just try and eject a disc and insert one while it's on, it just won't do it. Uh, so, and it's stupid because I like I probably don't even have like 200 hours on this PlayStation Three. So, is this your first or second PS Three? This is my first one. This is the one I got with the Killzone 3 bundle. I do not know that bundle. Is it a slim? Uh, no, it's like the second. It's like the, it's before the slim, but it's not the, like the 60 gig backwards compatibility one. It's like between those two things. Uh, oh, I just got an extra heart. Or, I didn't realize those would just be scattered around the levels this time. But... But yeah, I'm, I'm about five hours in, and it seems like it's finally about to open up, open up a little bit, which is not—it's not unreasonable. But um, and like I said, I, I've been enjoying it so far. I love the, the soundtrack in the game is like incredible. It's it's better than Persona Four. I didn't like um, Persona Four as much as Persona Three. Yeah, like I I think Persona Four has a better all around soundtrack than Persona Three, but the battle theme in three is better and there's a couple other tracks. Like three has like six or seven really amazing tracks and then the rest of it's pretty forgettable. And four was stronger it was stronger overall, but three had like higher highs. And this is just better than both of them. Yeah, I don't really agree with your assessment because there's not much of anything that I liked on Persona Four soundtrack, but I can respect you having an opinion that is not mine. Okay. <laughs> This is better. E either way, this is better than both of my previous ones. Uh, there's just like, there's more good music. There's not just a few. Both both soundtracks kind of just had a couple of real standout tracks, and this this has this is like good all the way down. It is very similar to the previous ones, but it's more like 70s cop action movie funk thrown in. I mean, in. that totally interests me. I'm definitely yeah. on board. Uh, That's one of my favorite musical genres: is cop funk. Yeah, or like like acid. It's like like almost. It's not quite the Dirty Harry soundtrack, but it is in that vein. Uh, it's pretty cool. But uh, well, how's your uh, how's your Switch? How's your how's Zelda treating you? Um, it's bad. Um, you know, you, you know from history that I'm not like the world's biggest 3D Zelda fan, but uh, I'm definitely enjoying it. Uh, the world is amazing, and it's just kind of like even if all I do is explore the world for like 30 or 40 hours, I think I'll have gotten a pretty good deal out of it. Oh no. <laughs> well, there are bat wings on the bags this time. Cute. Uh, yeah, it's just it's, it's just kind of phenomenal the way the world looks. I think the controls are fiddly. Um, a little bit. It gets better as you upgrade your stamina and get some. There's some armor that upgrades some of that stuff. But my God, this stamina! Like, <laughs> I just got my. I literally since we've been talking, I got my first stamina upgrade, and it's already like much more playable. How much have you How played, many, Joe? Did... Mm -hmm. How much of the game have you played? Um, did you go I straight? To... She was beating Resident Evil Seven. Did you go straight times. east, basically, to get to the Science Village. I did all the Science Village stuff already. Not all of it, but I like I started the fire there and um, did a lot of that stuff. And I was sort of I've been wandering around, just kind of picking off shrines. Right, but like, how many shrines have you done, for example? Mm, did you take a like couple of hard container okay. upgrades? So you're just like a little farther than me. I've done eight shrines, I would, and I just got to science, science Town. I would highly suggest your first, at least your first two or three upgrades, go right into stamina, because... The um, first two I did, yeah. Yeah, because you're going to get your ass kicked no matter what. Like, most of the enemies will kill you in one hit, regardless of you if you have three or four or even five hearts. Um, but having that extra stamina just makes it so e so much easier to explore the world and climb things and be the ant in the terrarium, which is what that game is really all about. I had heard that before I started playing, and so the first thing I did was to get a stamina upgrade, and like I could see immediately why I want to do that. Yeah. Because it's just, I mean, it's all about exploring. Like, Link as a character in this game, what makes him heroic is not his like sword fighting ability, which is pretty basic from what I can tell, but it's just the fact that the dude can go anywhere. You yeah. learn some. You learn some more like sword techniques. Pretty like if you haven't learned them yet, you're going to like pretty. I mean, I, I did a, sh a shrine that shows you how to like charge up your attack and do you know. Yeah, there's never the dodge, much some, uh, the dodge and counter attack and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. The combat in the game is pretty boring. I found. 
uh, I, I mean, it's fine. It's functional. Um, you will have some fun fighting Lionels the first couple of times, or Hinoxes, or some of the other weird um, mini boss fights are pretty fun the first time, but it's not. That is not the thing to go to that game for. That's for sure. Yeah, I just did the, my first combat trial dungeon. Yeah. Or not dungeon, but shrine, where it's like, fight here, fight this ridiculously overpowered thing. Like, not the one where you learn the stuff, but like the one where it's like, just fight this like mini boss, basically. Honestly, I'm still yeah, having yeah. trouble with blue moblins at this point, so, or blue goblins. Yeah. Not always. I'm getting better, and I, have, and I have better gear, and I've learned to throw bombs at them more often. Yeah. I Can find that the bombs like, don't seem to do as much damage as you would sort of think they Yeah, bombs would. don't do much damage. Especially later in the game, they do almost nothing as the enemies. Because every time there's a blood moon, um, it will like refresh the enemies and replace some of the weaker ones with stronger versions. And as their HP count goes up... The bomb um, damage doesn't really do much. Less yeah, but it's, it's good for yeah. stunning them, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, or even just creating some space using the the bombs to either make them hesitate or to use it to push them back. Like it's still they, it's still useful, but there was a certain point where I just stopped fighting things because there was there's literally no point in fighting guys in that game. Oh man, this um, is all new here. Check out this crazy turtle mount that the Black Knight has now. The Terror Pin. Mm-hmm. Funny like that. Good fun. So, uh, so what I'm finding out here is that you can just stay indefinitely in the air because you can do like a diving slash and then you bounce off the enemies. Yeah. Can you not, um, so when you're climbing walls, can you not, you can't turn the corners it looks like? I, I, you can, was you can ago, climb but... over the top corner, but what was happening to me earlier was that I was at the, the edge of my climbing range basically, so I didn't oh, have okay. quite enough juice to make it up. Is there a thing? Is there like a stamina gauge that tells you what you're climbing? You no, know, you, you just have a just... certain distance that okay. you get used to pretty fast. Sweet boobs there. When it rains, can you not climb? Is there... <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> Donovan? Um, oh man. Spectre Knight's so... real name is Donovan? <laughs> is he... Hmm. Um, have either of you guys found any of the climbing gear in Zelda? I found the, the bandana. Okay. Have you, Joe? Uh, no. Because I highly recommend... It, I don't... Like, there's not... There isn't a lot of things in that game I would recommend looking up. In fact, there's almost nothing that I would. But looking up the location of the climbing set might be worth your time. It will make the rest of the game a lot more bearable. Mm -hmm. uh, it will also significantly cut down the amount of time you spend climbing. Um, although even once you get that and have uh, and upgrade it and get like a, there's like a set bonus, it's still... It's still too slow. <laughs> it still feels a little too slow, yeah. Um, so the bandana, I think, is the shrine that's overlooking Kakariko Village. It's one of the yeah, it's one of the first. Maybe, I, maybe I did. Maybe I did get that. Let me take a look. It should be. It'll uh, be in your as soon as I saw pile. that it sped up climbing. I was like, "Fuck yes, give me that." Yeah. No. I and now I understand that. why I everyone. The Highland. The Highland. Uh, it's it is but... near. It's near where you come off the plateau. Um, it's like between that and Kakariko Village, but I don't know exactly where it is. Like I like I said, and then there's two other pieces. There's uh, some boots and some uh, chest plate that you can find. That's that's doable oh, early in the game. One of the pieces is guarded by a major combat uh, trial, which can be pretty trying that early in the game, but um, it would be worth it, I think, at least to, to test it out and maybe try to get at least another piece. Um, it really, it really Coffee said that's experience. me. Uh, I've also <laughs> heard that it's maybe a good idea to go after the elephant beast first, I don't know what you get from that, but it sounds like it. Eh. Coffee good... said morbid coffin. <laughs> Hi, coffee. The uh, the elephant, yeah, the elephant one's pretty good. The bird one is also really useful for just traversal sake. Um, either of those would be an appropriate first stops. Although you really should just kind of go wherever the hell you want. Right. Wherever the hell you want. Um, the game definitely pushes you towards the elephant at first. It feels like. Hello. Hey, what's up? Coffee? Hi, Copy. How you doing? Uh, Boomerang blade. 
Push the I'm skull to regain will. That's pretty goth. <laughs> I'm surprised now it's playing with the new Discord emotes. Can't right now, we're, we're ch chatting. I will mess with them when we're done. Uh, I, I, I had too much fun. I also don't... Aren't all coffins I morbid? Them? Really? How do I access them? Uh, the fun way to do it is to guess them. Okay. But if you want to cheat, you can just put all, press the little smiley face all right, in the text bo chat box and I'll show you on the stick all the custom emotes. This is my these, personal favorite one. These look pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> I have a bit of, a, bit of an issue here. That was the DLC. The First Shovel Knight? Shovel Knight, yeah. Uh, so far it's really good. About it. <laughs> Up, down, left, right, jump. Oops. These are all very good, Coffee. That's not what I want. Uh, I haven't gone very far in a coffee to answer your question. I just did the intro stage and I've just made it to the town hub, so... I've heard a lot of people like it better than the Plague Knight one because it's apparently completely unique. Like, it's not just refreshing stages from Shovel Knight. All of them are unique to Spectre Knight. Yes, that is true. Um, but I gotta tell you that Plague Knight was amazing, and so they can complain if they want, but... <laughs> If I like this better than I like Plague Knight, I'm going to be a really happy camper. It's I've seen a full playthrough of it and it looks really fun. Well, I'll let you know. <laughs> what is the honking? That's What's... my phone sitting on. Oh, okay. It's not an emote. I should do a hon honk emote. Funny, it doesn't seem like I can use the sub weapon by pushing up and attack the way I used to be able to. I have a dedicated sub weapon button now. Uh-oh, Bandcamp tells me that there is a new release from Calm Trues. Oh, didn't he just put out a record? Like, it was a, yeah, yeah. There, was an, there was like a five-song EP that came out this year, or last year, sometime. Was it nominated for a Grammy and shit? Like, was it? Yeah. Oh. It's electronic, uh... Really? Or maybe that was Tycho, actually. That might have been Tycho. Tycho had yeah. EPOP last year. Yeah, Tycho did have a new album last year. It was a good album. I liked it. Yeah, it was good. I I thought it was my least favorite Taiko, but it's still pretty damn good. I don't feel like I enjoyed their older albums as much. Um, but yeah, as he's much as... that, that dude. That dude makes some really great sounding music. Uh, I have yeah, he for... was. He was Taiko was nominated for best electronica, but he That's didn't cool. win. I wonder. Wonder who won that. Uh, I don't remember. Some some a record I hadn't listened to. Is the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, he probably really deserved to win it like four years ago or five years ago when his second album came out. But or second or was that the first album? I don't know. I can't remember. So are you enjoying Persona? Yeah, I'm loving it so far. Uh, we were just talking about it, but it's it, it definitely it goes some places early on. Uh, yeah. It is not nearly as breezy as the previous uh, the previous ones were. Although I guess there were murders pretty early in the first in the, in the fourth game, but this game like it's not just like some random things happening to people that you haven't really met. Like horrible things are happening to named character characters pretty early in Persona Five. You should probably go for the bad ending first. Then, <laughs> if you want to see some horrible things, go for the bad ending. I'm not gonna go for any specific endings. I'll just uh, take whatever comes. I may well, not finish it. I never finished either of the previous two games because I just didn't want. Them it to does end. the same thing that Persona 4 did, where if you don't get the bad ending, you get the real ending with a full dungeon at the end. So, oh, uh, okay. I think, didn't big. Persona 3 also have something kind of I like that? don't remember, because I've yes, never played Persona Festa. 3 has a, a month that you basically don't do if you get the bad ending. Mm. That's right. Yeah, I never finished Persona 3 just because it was so long. I don't know, I like the pace of Persona 4 better. Oh, the spinning mirror. Skin like, uh... by Flume won that. Also, 
Also nominated Jean Michel Jarre. Uh, Jean Michel Jarre? Sure. And Louis Vega, which I didn't rec I don't recognize. Louis Vega? What? <laughs> yeah. Mambo number Mambo six. Number <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the sequel that we've all been waiting for. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of a weird callback to the uh, the main game. Huh? You say, you, you thank the uh, magic mirror and says, "I'm not a mirror." <laughs> I like how they... Did you get any sub-weapons yet? Uh, yeah, I just got one. I oh. like the way they make you go through the little trial. Yeah, to learn, to how, learn to how to them. use a weapon. I agree. That is a good idea for getting you to have some idea of how this stuff works. Oh, wait a second, there's a secret back there. Hopefully, hopefully they carry that over to Super Shovel Knight. Yeah, we were saying we don't really know what's coming next for them, but... I'm on board, no matter what it is, basically. The one thing I agree with, I don't remember who said it, I don't know if it was in this circle or not, but they should just follow the console, like, cycle of, like, Shovel Knight is the NES game, then Super Shovel Knight, then Shovel Knight 64, and just make it, like, a career 3D Shovel Knight. That's the one thing, is I really don't want to play an N64-style game kind of ever <laughs> again in my life. That's legit. <laughs> just completely understandable. So ukulele just came out, and I don't know everywhere, but Polygon panned it. It's... Oh, did they? From what I've heard, it's not that great. I mean, that's not surprising, because Banjo-Kazooie sucks, so like... The first one was good. Why? No, it wasn't. The second one was awful. Eh, those games are fine. I don't know, I got Donkey Kong 64 with my N64 when that I That one's it. the worst. Donkey Kong 64. That game sucks, too. Yep. Yeah, Donkey Kong 64 is actually... It, it is not even a good one of those. It is a very poorly designed... Uh, Collectathon 3D platformer. Uh, whereas at least the Banjo Kazooie games are good at what they're. Okay, at well. But uh, actually, the the QT 3D platformer that I'm kind of interested in is that Snake Pass game. Uh, yes, that looks pretty cool. At all. Waypoint but... was streaming it yesterday, and Austin Walker was kind of shitting all over it. Oh, uh, was he? I don't. I watched a quick look at Giant Bomb, and it seemed interesting. It doesn't seem like something I'd be willing to pay full price for, but it's on Switch, so I, <laughs> I gave some it extreme consideration to paying for it. But I don't. I don't actually know what the. Uh, I think his like. main concern was all the puzzles felt the same. Like there was no variation. It was Wild literally stuff. just coil around stuff because you're a snake. Yeah, but that that sounds fine. I mean, I guess it depends on how long it is and how difficult the challenge I mean get, 90% but... of the stream was them naming mistake Dr. Boner so okay oh I man mean... you can rail grind in this game so is Dr. Boner like is he a real doctor or he, he's the doctor that fixes your broken bones your broken boner or your broken boners Like twenty bucks. I don't know. I got the, about a, about ninety five more hours of Persona to play. So I'm yeah, I think you might be good for a little while. At the moment, I really fucking wish that game was on my Switch though, so I could lay in bed and play it. Yeah, I really do too. Uh, see, I'm either stuck using a PlayStation Four contro controller that is wired to my PlayStation Three, or using the shit ass PlayStation Three controller. Does that just work? What's that? PlayStation. Yeah, you can. You if the PlayStation Four controller doesn't ha doesn't connect wirelessly to a PlayStation Three though, so you have to plug it in. Um, hmm. Which I didn't even realize ideal. that it worked. Yeah. So that's that's gonna. It works neat. totally fine. I mean, it's a little weird because it doesn't have quite the same button layouts that PS Three controllers have, and I don't know if the I don't know if the motion stuff works or not, but you can just use it as a PlayStation controller just fine. I don't know if anyone played. noticed that I was talking to a possum with Batitude playing with a yo-yo. A lot on the that uh, like catwalk thing you were just on. Mm -hmm. no, I, I saw the guy, but I didn't realize that it was a rocket knight. It's some <laughs> kind of race. Yeah, it looks like a, like a time trial or something. Yeah, in the far 
far left there, there's a picture of you and there's a picture of that animated armor that you were just chatting with. Right. He gets an elevator and I have to climb, I guess. That's how it works. Oh, okay, I can't climb on those walls. Got it. Oh, there he is right there. Yeah, okay, I see. <clears throat> ah, jump. Oh, no. Hmm. Shovel Knight <laughs> couldn't do anything on the walls, right? He can't even, like, wall nope. jump or anything? not a thing. He can just shovel. Do, do, do the oh, Scrooge McDuck do bounce. Shot. Yeah, he does the Scrooge McDuck bounce. We were, we were like, uh, um, we were trying to pick what the next, like, forgotten NES mechanic that, uh, the Yacht Club should mine for their next, uh, not Shovel Knight related thing. Slide I thought in. Metal, I thought Metal Storm would be, like, the... My gravity ideal. gravity reversal mechanics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Y signal says he's not Doctor Dick, and uh, apparently no, he's Doctor Boner. <laughs> How about sneak rattle and roll? Isometric platformer. <laughs> let's not. Let's. You know what? The people who did ukulele can do a snake rattle and roll revival now that they're done. Snake pass. RC pro am. Yeah. RC pro -Am. I would. I. I'd be okay with that. Game. It's I like Snake Rattle Just a racing game. RC, yeah. RC Pro Ram is a, like the best NES racing game, other than it's probably. I think I like it better than Super Off Road for the NES. You should play RC you Pro. You do like next... Super Off Road quite a bit, though. That's me. Super I know this about great, you. But the Super Nintendo version is a lot better. Than the, uh, also, the NES by the way, you, so. you will refer to it by its true and proper name: Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off Road. Apologize oh, to Iron Man Stewart. <laughs> But there's just like the the Nintendo version only has like four tracks or eight tracks. Right, right. This is bad. Mm -hmm. This is tough. <laughs> Isn't that sort of the point? I do really like what's up with the, the wall. Oh, up, oh up. boy. You need to you need to get um, Flashman's weapon. <laughs> I don't so need it in Mega Man 2, and I don't need it here. I think this might be an endless thing. We haven't had this for a while now. So there is a top of the screen. So is there? Maybe you just have to make it all the way up there. Yeah, on the, the thing on the left. Is it the thing? You're climbing that tower, and the tower has a top. Oh, so. oh I slashed down when it's just slashed up. I don't, I don't oh. want to give up on this. <laughs> I kind of feel like it's a bad idea if I'm ending with King Knight, though. It certainly seems the, like the least interesting of the three, but I'm willing to believe that they can surprise me. I hope so, because like... Because like, Play Knight didn't look King like it would be interesting. Yeah, but the only thing King Knight really has going for him is the walk, yep. the walk animation. But I mean, the I think swagger. it's going to be... I think it's supposed to be maybe like kind of like a Pikmin-style thing where you have like minions. Hmm. That could be interesting. I mean, again, if anyone can make it good, these guys can. Yeah. I'm really though. I'm interested to just oh, see yeah. what they do next, right? Like I just like. Well, they can't do anything until they finish. Yeah. Right until they the until they story. honor all of our Kickstarter. Uh... But I would love and to I'm... see them do a different game before af after a King Knight, but before whatever they do after that, like something to break up the five years of Shovel Knight they've been working on. Right. I'm sure they would love that too, but Shovel Cart. I'd put the shit out of Shovel Cart. I think it's good. Oh, Doki man. Doki Panic. How's that sound for a... Arts? I mean, certainly you're, you're, someone's got to make a sequel to that, right? Nintendo won't do it. It's I, mean, I guess our, our friend Adam kind of made a thing that was kind of like that. But he doesn't have quite the, he does not have the quite the same resources that the uh, Yacht Club games do. Maybe he can team up with them. Yeah. Crescent Isle 2. Well, they can make Curse of the Crescent Island 2. <laughs> Man, I'm really about to ruin this guy's day. Pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we were. I was trying to think of other like isometric or like overhead perspective racing games, and I can't. There's not many of them. Like like there's like sprints or is it, ah, right? Is which it like I, car? Super Off Road is basically a follow up to Super Sprint, right? Isn't Super Sprint yeah, I guess straight so, yeah. top down? Or is that Rally X, I guess? Uh, uh, Super Sprint, I think, is straight top down, yeah. But I mean, it's a similar, similar thing where the camera is a fixed perspective, or it has a fixed perspective above the car. <laughs> perspective? Yeah. What am I doing? Ugh, that was terrible. I just can't think of. 
It seems like that sort of style of racing game was abandoned. There were a few like really bad once, license once ones on Super in... Nintendo. I remember that much. I feel like once they could put you in the car, it was just like, okay, we're done with this. I mean, I, I think on Super Nintendo you get some better racing games, but on the original Nintendo there aren't that many. Yeah, but for like isometric racing games, I want to say there were a lot of licensed ones on the Super Nintendo that weren't very good. And I there's think rock and roll like... racing, which is like pretty okay. Yeah, chiptune Black Sabbath, right? Uh, yeah, chiptune Queen also, I think? Like chiptune Deep Purple, maybe? I guess it's not it's not procedural exactly. Like, rock and roll racing doesn't have uh doesn't show you the whole track though. Ah. It does not show you the whole track, but it is neither does RC Prime. Yeah. It's true. That, there's kinda of two different it's... styles. Yeah. I really like the diorama model style that you get from Super Off Road, but Ivan the Iron Man Stewart Super Off Road Racing. Um uh -huh. Yes. But I can go for like the RC Pro Am style game too. But uh, on the Super Nintendo, my favorite racing game was always Top Gear 2. Yeah, Top Gear's pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. sweet. I like Super Off Road in Super Nintendo. It's probably my favorite racing game. Super Nintendo. Does that not? But does that have four player support on the Super Nintendo? I Are thought sure? that I thought that there was a reason why we played the NES version when we were all together. That, that was time. the most PR thing I've ever heard anybody cause... say. Because I had just because that. that's the one that Eric has, yeah. yeah. But my that, Super Nintendo version does not work anymore. That, that, that's and then the I most... tried, I tried to buy a copy on Amazon, and the guy sent me Super Off Road the Baja. That's not right at all. Uh, and he refunded not... my money, uh, but it still wasn't game? what I wanted. I did what get you're the saying game. is it was the like Baja $3. doesn't stack up. No, the Super Off Road the Baja is not. It, it is a. It is not a Super Off Road style game. Anyway, it's like from a behind the car style on the Super Nintendo or something, I think. Oh, wow, okay. We're talking about a lot of racing, but I just want to say that this obstacle course is making it obvious that there's a whole hell of a lot you can do with this character's ability set. <laughs> I've been enjoying watching you, but there really isn't uh, a lot of commentary I can make. It just seems like you just have to I know. Get it. But I should probably mechanics. stop bashing my head against this, but I feel like I'm getting close to winning. Small, small spoilers. It may just be opinion. The last boss is fucking awful. Of this game? Yes. In the everything else about that DLC is great except the last boss, which is yeah, we'll see. bad. It's bad design. Can't stop. Playing. I'm just gonna play the damn thing and we'll see what happens. The, the, the main like. Actually, I plan on streaming the whole thing. Like, uh, I won't just do it on Wednesdays. So I'll just whenever I feel like it. I'll. Show up and stream some more. Plague Knight was the first game that I really streamed by myself, so, you know, it's a special thing. This is a very long challenge, I'm just realizing now that I'm only like halfway up the tower. Here's some really good uh, Wikipedia trivia bullshit. Electronic Gaming Monthly gave the Lynx version of Super Off Road a 3.7 out of 10. That's commenting low. that though Super Off Road was an excellent arcade game, the choppy animation and scrolling in Link's version made it almost unplayable. I have to say that Can't my new Imagine Switch... playing <laughs> Super Off Road with scrolling, but oh no. Okay, this is too long. I'm gonna give up on this for now. Uh, I have to say that when I got my Switch to put it together in Portal Mode for the first time, it reminded me of a Link's because it's such a kind of a long system. Yeah. Do you think it's really uncomfortable to hold? I wouldn't I say really uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Um, I would say it is much heavier than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. Um, I it's haven't it's played heavier it. than like a similarly sized tablet because I have a seven inch tablet. And yeah. This is heavier oh, for sure. It's it's a it's a dense mofo. Yeah. It's also considerably more powerful than my tablet, so it makes sense. But no, but like a modern iPad is probably a more powerful system than this thing is, and it doesn't weigh as much. Okay. Um, no, I mean, overall, it's a really cool gadget, um, I think it's really neat. I love that it's going to be a portable and a home system. Uh, I love that it does stuff like when I turn it on, when it's docked to my TV, it, oh, it turns on my TV and switches it to the right input. Um, wow, that's very nice of it. Yeah, so like if I'm playing it portably and I, do and I dock it, then it just immediately turns on the TV and switches over. And because this, you know, because the system can suspend, then like three seconds later I'm playing, uh, 
you know, right exactly where I left off, which is pretty sweet. That is legit one of my favorite things about modern systems. Like, the PS4 also will do that. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's just like, okay, I'm just going to stop playing now. I'm just going to, like, keep the system to sleep. And then when I wake it up, it's like, I don't have to reload my game. I don't have to... Like, it's just oh, right where I left it. Yeah. Everything should just be Nintendo DS style. Yep. Game Boy S. I really, yeah, I, I don't know. I, did I the SP the, do the that? Switch is the SP the was the first club show handled. Right, but did it do that? Did it suspend your game and you closed it? No, it, just, like, it didn't off? suspend it, but yeah. it had the clamshell design of just stick it in your pocket. You have right. to pay money to teleport to the levels? <laughs> Is King Knight the one who's uh, charging you? You're going full Diablo style. Wow, did you I'm hear... glad I'm not totally broke, and the, and the harder levels cost more to get to, I guess. Did Teleport you hear the uh, thing going on with the Switch? Or what's, no. what's going new on problem now? with the switch uh apparently when the system is docked yeah has really poor ventilation i think because the vents are on the bottom of the system if i remember right they're either no, on the top the vents or the are bottom on top. The vent, but the, or the either way it might be the air intakes that are on the bottom yeah apparently it, the dock is trapping heat and warping people's systems like bending it oh, so no, they okay. didn't it, it, I will never be playing this in anything but handheld mode, probably, so... Oh, well, I will. An issue. I'm wondering if they're gonna do, like, a revision really soon, if the dock, maybe, like, a smaller dock or a cheaper dock, one that doesn't scratch systems and, you know, retain heat. Because yeah. that thing is literally just a hunk of plastic with, like, a PCB board at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. I'm not 100% sure, like, the, the first thing that happened when I plugged my Switch in was that I immediately started having controller problems on the main menu. Uh, but once, but like shortly after that, uh, I did a system update, and I haven't really had them since. So I don't know if I'm going to be having to send my controller back to to get fixed or what. Yeah. It should be just the left Joy-Con because that's yeah. the one that has the manufacturing error. Right. Um, but that that was the one that was acting up. But but like I can't do anything with just a right Joy-Con, you know. Yep, it's true. But it Doesn't change anything for me. You Supposedly Nintendo probably... has been really good about getting those back in a time. Yeah, fashion. they are. Mine does account. have that. I was messing around with mine. Uh, when we were playing Splatoon, uh, the, the Splatoon test, whatever the fuck it was. Test fire. Test fire. Global yeah. test fire. Um, and yeah, if I put my uh, Joy-Cons under my desk, then the one will get disconnected, so I have to send that. I know somebody, somebody I know did uh, two of them, like replaced two left Joy-Cons, and yeah. they, he got them back within like two, three days. Yeah, it sounds like they're pretty snappy about it. I guess I should do that now while I don't have anything to play, right? I should yeah. Be able to play. I can't well, that was his whole... Zelda already. <laughs> but, 80 um... hours... 80 hours in a month, dude. Plus, I mean, I haven't played it in like a week and a half, so... So I know they made three weeks? Like a... <laughs> yeah. They made like some announcement or something saying like... Future manufactured switches are going to have that like yeah. bar that's blocking the signal. Yeah, they said it was like a, a manufacturing error. Yeah, it's like a metal bar blocking the uh, like Bluetooth or whatever, or like the antenna. Take the... apart and spray my own foam in it too, because that's all I'm doing to fix them. But I don't. That's anyway, yeah. It, yes. I wouldn't do it myself. Like I think you should, if, if you're waiting, yeah, send it back to Nintendo and. Yeah. Um, I should do that. Anyway, uh, yeah, I just, I think the Switch is super, it's fine. I, I wish it was a little thicker. Thicker? And, yeah, because it's, the way I play it, laying in bed and using it in handheld mode, the thinness of it makes it really rough on my arms and my hands after a couple, of, after an hour or two. Um, That's kind of the issue I had with the 3DS XL. Yeah, it's, it's just, it was too it is. compared to the old yes, video, so I had to. Yeah, yeah I had I to. Really... Good. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, you can go ahead. No, I had to order like a Japanese Monster Hunter grip for my 3DS. Yeah. For the XL, then it basically turns into an Xbox controller and it makes it playable. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely buy something that turned my Switch into a Wii U gamepad. Because the Wii U gamepad oh, is, that. I think, really, I'm really sure. comfortable. I know I'm people sure don't Larry like it because it's. Do something. Yeah, I know people don't like the Wii U gamepad because it's super light and feels kind of plasticky and like a child 
toy, but um, if it's anything, way more ergonomic than the Switch controller. If anything, keep an eye on Hori, especially if they do port Monster Hunter to the Switch, because Hori has released like a peripheral for the 3DS for every Monster Hunter game. <laughs> like I think with a uh, what is it, Monster Hunter <laughs> or like three or four? Rainbow vomiting. Falcon thing. It's kind of a variation on something that was in Basic Shovel Knight. The, yeah. There were these just they were stat they weren't enemies, they were statues. I think my favorite horrible like Monster Hunter peripheral they made was uh for Monster Hunter 3, I think. You know, they did the whole Wii U and 3DS dual release. Mm -hmm. Uh they made a grip that turned your 3DS into a PSP, so you could do the claw grip, and it was the worst thing in the world. <laughs> And then all the grips they've done since have literally just been like, yeah, this is a regular ass controller because it has a nub on it now. <laughs> Looks like people have made things that will turn your Joy Cons into a more reasonable shape or size. But they are very anything. small. I don't find them uncomfortable to hold, although I do find that the trigger buttons are a little too close together and I occasionally match the wrong yeah. trigger. Well, I actually think playing with the Joy Cons. The, the few times I have used it docked, um, I don't like the the shitty plastic thing that they give you to hold the Joy Cons, but just playing Dog with face. one Yeah, keep just playing with the Joy Cons one in each hand was actually pretty comfortable. Maybe if you got the dog sticker, it would make it better. Mm, yeah, I, I don't know. So. I, I always hated the um, the nunchuck Wii remote combo because I didn't like like when I'm holding the nunchuck just kind of freeform I kind of can't keep track of which way the analog stick is pointing <laughs> and I can only imagine that being even worse with individual it's always cons. relative to your thumb you just you move your thumb in the same direction uh, it took so. me a long time to get used to it I've now played a shit ton of Mario Galaxy so at, like at this point I'm pretty good at it but yeah it was a hurdle for a while hmm. yeah I guess I never really had a problem with that but it seems it's not an unreasonable thing um, uh, but I don't like the, I don't like the thing that they sent because it reminded me too much of the Dreamcast controller. The the dog face. Yeah. They've been restocking the Pro Controller like pretty. I'm not gonna fast. fucking pay seventy dollars for the, another controller when I just have just bought an Xbox One and a PlayStation Four controller in the last three years. So. Ugh. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm wondering if I should eventually. It kind of depends on. It. If it sells you on it, it works on the PC. So I, I like I said, I, I just have a lot bought of PC an Xbox controllers. One controller. That's the problem. But I don't. I maybe I will at some point. But seventy dollars is a lot. It's, it's fucking like, yep. more it's 90 expensive bucks than either of the other controllers. Yeah, that's like thirty dollars more than I paid for my Xbox One controller. I thought you were gonna get one of the custom ones. Once they announced the D three. Uh, I got mine was the Dawn Shadow one that was like 50 bucks. It's like mm. pink and black. Dawn Shadow? Yep. Yes. Dawn Shadow. It's shadow of your dog. color of his dong in the evening light. That, that's the custom <laughs> text. That no, no, Mike, that's the dong silhouette. Oh, sorry. Different color. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like $20 more, but anyway. This is my favorite thing from that E3 when they first released that and all the top controllers were just like gray Xbox One controllers that said PlayStation 4. <laughs> Playing this with my 8-bit Doom Super Famicom like controller, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, I... You've had that for a while, right? Uh, I had the NES one a while back, and I got the Super Famicom one more recently just because I wanted to. Uh... Isn't the NES one just colored slightly differently, though? But the. Uh, the it, no, layout well, it's is also got the squareness. Um, oh, it is squared up. I am not entirely. Interested. So it has extra buttons. Um, what am I supposed to do here? Can you can't write. You can't I just, I just got an achievement for not having any idea what to do. <laughs> Probably a bunch of strange in there. Dark slide. Uh, anyway, they're, they're a little fiddly to get working those controllers, like in terms of compatibility. They don't, they're not um, X input controllers, which can be a, a pain. But if you're using Joy to Key like I am, then they're pretty sweet for playing retro games. Or retro styled games. Indeed. Or today's hottest release. PlayStation 4 controller has got a pretty nice D pad on it. 
PS4 controller does have a really nice D-pad on it. Pretty good buttons on that thing, too. Wow. Well, apparently the way a lot of people are coming into these 8-bit do controllers now is that one comes with the analog NT Mini. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sure, if you can afford a $500 console, you can probably afford a $40 controller. Also true. Uh, but, you know, I actually I sent out my Famicom to get the HDMI mod put in it today. Okay. So, pretty excited to get that right. back. and Straight to HDMI? Huh? Straight to HDMI. I, I figured why screw around. It's about the same price to do the RGB mod, and the HDMI mod is sharper. So. What resolution does it output at? 1080p. The, oh, yeah, you can do some. Oh yeah. The reason I ask is that the games game. aren't even close to that. So like, who's doing the scaling in that case? The the board, the the mod board does. Oh the scaling. okay. Oh wow. Uh, okay. It's uh, it's done by Kevtris, who designed the FPGA for the Analog NT Mini. Okay. So you're gonna be shit out of luck when they release uh, when you buy your 4K TV. Yeah, uh, yeah. As long as my 4K TV takes a good. Actually, a lot of people that I've <laughs> that I've seen talk and write about this recommend putting it in 720 because 720 is a clean upscale of 240. Right. right. You have to sort of like dicker around with like either you're not using a, an accurate, a totally accurate thing uh, uh, scale if you do it to oh. 1080, or you have like uneven pixels and that causes a weird shimmer effect, which I hate. So. Um, so most people do 720. So if I get a 4K TV someday and it does 720p, I, I should still. Oh. <laughs> I gotta say I'm not the kind of guy who can get that hung up about accuracy in, in emulation. But I yeah. did just buy an NES Classic, so clearly I'm a heathen. Chris. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Uh, did you get that yet? No, or, or... no it's a, it's a, it's waiting for me at the post box that we keep in the states. Well, it's a, not a post box; it's a general store. Okay. Hopefully, I'll have it in like another week or two. I'm actually getting um, one of those 8-bit do adapters so that I'll be able to use my NES 30 controller on that thing. I have a wireless controller. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Just tell me how that you don't is. Don't want to use that two and a half foot long cable that comes nope. with the. I'm actually also ordering a controller extension cable just in case I have issues with the, the wireless. Uh, so, yeah. So are you gonna Are you gonna try and hack that thing and put absolutely. more stuff on it? Or, okay. 100%. I like. I figure if Nintendo um, totally f screws up the uh, Switch Virtual Console system, which they're absolutely going to. Then this will be kind of my guarantee, <laughs> my fallback plan to make sure that I can play all my NES games. Well, they have, they've, I mean, they're, they've already said that they're not doing virtual console, right? I thought they, they have, said that. I don't think they've been that well, clear. Yeah, I mean, they said uh, that part of the deal was that the Super NES games will now have online play, and if you pay for their online service, you'll get a free Super NES yeah. or NES or. It's NES like a rental that you get month. once a month. All right, but so they must be doing something. Yeah, right. yeah. I just thought they said that they weren't doing virtual console. I mean, it could mean anything because they did that Secret of Mana announcement. Right. That's kind of the and thing I was thinking that, that they, has they would just, play, they, would just they would put the they would just like release the games, but yeah. not. Um, I don't know if that has online play though. I'm not sure. Like I don't, I don't know, know if they actually announced everything. I do know they said it supports like the three player mode with the Joy Cons and everything. That's pretty cool. There are only two Joy Cons. That's can why you, you buy another one. That's the you that's the secret. Or Joy Cons. So I think yeah, you can do up to eight. You can have lots of Joy Cons, or you could have a Pro Controller, or like. I'm just a little sad that they don't actually, like, the Wii U supported so many old Wii controllers. I own so many Wii controllers, it would be really nice if, yeah. I could, if I could use them. Just for, like, the kind of simple games where they would work, but... Yeah, I want to say it supports up to 8, there's just nothing that uses 8 players right now. <laughs> Bomberman doesn't support 8 players? I, I think it does. does. It? And that's probably, like, the only game that you can use 8 players for. It's, what is there? There's... All those one player games, Snipper Clips, I think only does up to four. Fast yeah. racing, I don't know, is that maybe two? What about uh, one, I think two, that's just two. Yeah. One actually, one, two, 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 one, actually. One, yeah, it's just, it's just two. Well, kind of. You jump, can like hot jump. speed more than two. Slide, slide. Um, I'll be honest though, like, one, two, switch is super fun. It's just, 
I mean, I'd like to have it. I'm just not going to pay sixty-five Canadian dollars for it. Right, it's just it. not worth what they want you to pay for it. Is the thing. I made mention of this on Twitter. Uh, One Two Switch is a great, like, you know, idea for a Switch WarioWare game. Great, yes, for that, if they if they did a WarioWare game in the style of One Two Switch, I would be on that in a second. That would be great. Just imagine Wario yelling at you to eat, and then you got to eat the sandwich with the Switch controller. Yeah. Well, I think Joe and I, you and I, were talking about this over the weekend because I was down hanging out with you, and we both kind of decided that whatever forty five dollars is a little bit too much for three Secret of Mana games. I agree. Although, yeah. Considering that I already they, own the really good one on Virtual Console in the Wii. Yeah, if they had, if they do have online play and they did release a proper oh. translation for uh, the third one, then then maybe that would be a package worth paying paying forty five dollars for. I don't know. It depends on who publishes it here. Yeah. I was trying to find. I was trying to find some information on whether or not. Oh, they had one online, more hit. But... I don't think there's been like an official announcement other than like, hey, this thing exists. Yeah, but yeah, um, that's pretty much all the same. Yeah, depending on whether or not they get a publisher, it's probably not going to be localized here. Right. Well, I would say that's the thing. Like, someone has to translate right. Second Den Sets Three into English. Who who did the PSP remake or the Vita remake or whatever? The one that recently came out is the Vita remake of the Game Boy game. Right. I don't have any idea. I'm not sure. Because they would probably be the most likely to do it if they decide to. This is, this is rough. Snow shovel Viking is uh, used to darkness. I've never been a big fan of the, the the spikes in the snow level. Yeah, it's pretty punishing. Well, it's just that there's always those like there are a lot of places where you can drop snow clumps on them to make them safe to traverse, but it's kind of a really fidgety thing, and it's really easy to screw it up and, and get yourself killed, like in the middle of this boss fight where he's tearing up the ground every couple seconds. <laughs> I don't know, the movement abilities that this character has seems to have a pretty high skill ceiling. Yes. And a pretty steep learning Oh, curve, so. damn it. I'm losing all my money. I mean, I, it probably assumes that you played through you yeah, know, as Shovel Knight yeah. and as Plague Knight, so like... Yeah, but I mean, it's a different skill set than either of those characters have, and also, <laughs> that was a long time ago. <laughs> So the funny thing for me is that, like, of the three characters so far, I would say Shovel Knight is by far the least interesting of them. I wonder yeah. if you'd say that if you played, if you didn't play as him first, though. His moveset is maybe, really, maybe. really straightforward compared to these two guys. I mean, oh, it was, it was he can playing. run and jump and bounce on fools' heads. It's, it's he was platformer, platformer mascot. Right, but like Plague Knight and, and Spectre Knight have both been much more complicated. And like you said, really high skill ceilings. Well, they also had the game, like, there, already done. Sure, sure, sure. It's I, just... I, I'm, I understand how it happened, but it's just interesting that they've kind yeah. of... They've kind of obsoleted their main character in a certain sense. Like, I'm not really excited to play another game as Shovel Knight. Well, I mean, we don't know that they're necessarily making one, right? I mean... Yeah, I think he's just saying theoretically. If they said Shovel Knight 2 comes out and it is just, you know, another campaign of the guy, like, I'd buy it and play it, but I would be basically waiting for them to release Plague Knight and, I guess, Spectre Knight. <laughs> By the time I've mastered this, I'm going to want to play some more. <laughs> I'm kind of wishing I had a bit more health. I don't have anything that I can use to refill my health right now, either. Is this the first area you can go to? Well, actually, I think in the end you can go to anyone that you want, and I think that the money is maybe the reward that you get? It's not clear. They make a compromise. Well, if instead of doing Shovel Knight 64, uh -huh. right? That would, like, Sega Saturn or... Shovel Knight you know, Solid? Oh, uh, Shovel Knight. <laughs> 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 No yeah, thanks. he's got a thousand bucks as my reward for beating him, so that's not what it costs to go there. I would love to see them do like a totally different game 
like Shovel Knight Solid. I'd like that even if it was just like an April Fool's joke. Shovel Knights into Dreams. Is that what you use? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, success. I have completed the first stage. The stages of this game are long, so I don't know that I'm gonna do like another full stage uh, tonight on the stream. Do you tech okay. demo? I mean, it is 11 right now, so. Tech demo of Shovel Knight running from a well. Did I miss anything, lady? Yeah, are there any giant apple whales in this in this game? Uh, I haven't seen them yet. I'm gonna say maybe not. But there is a there is a thing that I haven't gotten yet, which does heal you. For example, if I buy the what the will skull, I can use that to regain health. Throw a scythe that climbs over obstacles. Hey, you get to be death. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna buy the health restoring item. You kind of are death, right? I say, yeah, but you already you get to throw scythes now. Here comes my will skull. This seems better than Dark Siders too. Was a huge disappointment for me. Alright. Darksiders 2 or dark, just Darksiders? Dark, Darksiders 2. Darksiders 1 is great. I think I have them both, and I don't think I've played either. You should play the first one. You should play the first one, it's very good. Isn't it just like if Zelda was a Man of War album cover? Uh, yeah, kind of. But I mean, it's more fun and. What if, what if Ocarina of Time was a fun than game? Any of the previous, than any of the 3D Zelda games, save Ocarina, I think. Or Wind Waker. I was gonna say, I thought you were a big Wind Waker fan. Wait, yeah, how do you but... feel about Majora's Mask? I thought you I thought you liked that one too. Yeah, Majora's, those games, both of those games are very good, but Darksiders is more fun to play than both of them. As is Okami, okay. honestly. <laughs> Okay, See, I burned out. Until, I don't say I burned out Breath on Until Breath of the Okami. Wild came out, Okami was the best Zelda game since I, I have a copy of Okami, and I put probably 15 hours into it, and I just kind of got tired of the combat and the dicking around with the drawing with the right analog stick, and I don't know, I just didn't get as into it as uh, a like lot of other drawing. people did. The Wii version, if you ever play it again. so incredibly beautiful. It is. It's a beautiful it game. It took a little too long, uh, for sure. Like, you could... Did you finish? Did you beat uh, the eight-headed snake? No. And move on to the second area? Oh, it's... yes, I think I did that. But that's yeah. like not Me very too. far into the second area. Yeah. It was the it's like, it's like three, like, 10 to 15 hour areas, so. Um, and they're not yeah. really connected that closely. Um, that first one is definitely the... Well, it's like three games the thrown into one. Yeah. And then they all basically converge at the end. Yep. Hmm. I really like that game. But yeah, Dark Siders is really good. You should play. It's I mean, because it's a little bit more third-person action game-y than. Um... Woo! Check it out, dude. I'm totally skate I'm snowboarding. So, so what didn't you like about Dark Siders too? Uh, Dark that, like, why was disappointing? Like the, the level design is not as good, and also Dark Siders Two has a lot of loot stuff in it. I tried to beat Diablo. Oh, yeah. hey. oh. Just, I recruited this dude. The nice. loot stuff isn't very good. Um, hmm. I'll have to check that out then, because I do have. I think my shitty old roommate, who still owes me like several hundred dollars, like left a copy of Dark Siders behind when he yeah. like bailed out without paying me rent for a month. That's worth like three dollars. Yeah, yeah Dark, right. Dark, right. Dark, Dark Siders on the PC is like zero dollars too so it's isn't it it's in a bun there's a bundle there's a humble bundle right now where you get a humble playstation bundle actually where you can get dark a bunch of old thq like IP yeah it's for... it's been in a bunch of bundles too so it's kind of it's a game you can get for basically nothing uh... yeah uh let's see oh, no. the thq nordic playstation humble bundle and so it's uh, Unwritten Tale, Red Faction. I can't tell what game that is. Oh, Super Dungeon Bros. Uh, Deponia, Arcania, Battle Worlds, Kronos, Destroy All Humans, Legend of K, Destroy All Humans 2, MX vs. ATV Supercross, Darksiders, Darksiders 2, MX vs. ATV Supercross Encore, Darksiders 2, Death. Definitive edition. Nice. <laughs> and Darksiders. Darksiders 
death. Darksiders War Master Edition, oh which those are the PS4 versions, yeah. I guess. I, is yeah. the is Darksiders one on PS4 like worth? That's the fifteen dollars or more tier has all the Darksiders stuff. Probably it's just a remake of Darksiders. It's on it's everything. It's probably higher resolution. I don't know. I know there's a Wii U port of Darksiders. <laughs> I just that learned that you sort can of makes do sense. tricks when kind of when hopping off of rails. Sick. That was a long man. When did that that game was 2010? Was Darksiders? Which, that Darksiders game is seven years Xbox. old at this point. Sounds it's about right. Xbox. Yeah. Huh? No, 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 it was, no, it was Xbox, Xbox 360, 360. I mean, yeah. Yeah, because I was yeah, playing it, was... it while we were doing one of our Game of the Year podcasts. Yeah, January 2010 it came out, so it is seven years old. Oh my goodness. I like how I just assumed the Xbox 360 is the original Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, gentlemen, I'm going to be... Yeah. yeah, since it's just you about time to end, I'm just going to play this until we're done talking. So, Joe, if you're on your way out... I'm on my way out. Unless I, I mean, if we're all leaving, then I'll hang out until we all leave in like a minute. I mean, I can go play Persona, so we can. Alright, this will be my last <laughs> attempt at climbing the tower. Alright, once Mike once Mike dies, speaking we'll call of Persona. Yeah. Oh man. And uh, we didn't do Genesis or Genesis tonight, but if anybody's watching and is like sad about that, you can check out the one Eric and I did on Sunday, which is now on YouTube. It was a special couch co-op edition of Genesis or Genesis. This is the first time in, since like 7.30 that I've had internet for an hour in a row, so... <laughs> nice. I'm glad you were able to use it to hang out with us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Eric and I played um, Contra Hardcore. And somebody in the YouTube comments told me that there's apparently a ROM hack of it that has... It's still... It's the American version in that all the text is in English, and it is as, as it is in the American version, but they re-add the energy bar. Nice. And uh, some of that stuff. Some of the like, easier difficulty stuff. One of those essential hacks, kind of like the Metroid one that lets you start every time with full health. To yeah. All right. Or the Simon's Quest one where the villagers don't lie their asses off to you. <laughs> I think uh, that's going to be it for Spectre Night for now, so... I'll come back. Is this, is this different every time you do it, Mike? I think they randomize the order of the segments. Okay. It seems like there's a lot of repetition of what segments you do, but I don't I don't know if it's actually like fully procedural or if they just yeah change the order. Check it out, man! I can do sick grinds anytime I want. <laughs> Cowabunga! <laughs> All right, and on that note, <laughs> we'll see you next week at the same you can time. Hop and do tricks. Mm -hmm. well, skate I mean, you, you have to put you have to put skate. <laughs> tricks in games as much as possible because as we all know Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 is the best video game of all time that's numerically right. speaking I mean math has proven I, I can't that disagree that's the case with that. so it's, it's the best Valentine's game <laughs> roses are red violets are blue Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 yeah see there you go <laughs> and on that note thanks everyone for watching we'll be back next week on the stick <laughs>